Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago as usual. And as you can see, I've got none other than Ben Bateman with me here today. Say hi, Ben. Hello. Hi, everybody. And uh, to I, be here. I, I, put, uh, I put hot water on the thumbnail and then people were afraid it was you. I said, no, this is not that. He, he's reviewing another clip with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was unintentional clickbait. I, I re- that really wasn't my angle. Hey, but, uh, you don't get to 30,000 subscribers just by accident. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got a fun clip. It's Judge Simpson. Uh, we've got a guy who did a boo-boo. And uh, Mr. Bateman's going to explain it for us. So let's let's get that party started here. Uh... All right. My right on. All right, where are we? Actually, for the people. Thank you for that brief recess, Your Honor. I was able to consult with one of my supervisors, and at this time, I don't feel comfortable moving forward and taking testimony and told this issue is for your support. No, Joss, this is a different deal. I'm very concerned about the potential ethical violation and the potential ineffective claim you may resolve there from, and I'm just not comfortable moving forward at this time. Um, I am no one who made this the first time. I was prepared to go today. Obviously, I didn't have to make a time. I apologize for the delay to the court and to the witnesses. But I do believe it was unavoidable. I, I will add no comment on this time. Mr. Margolis. I would like the opportunity to correct the clerical error immediately. We are also prepared to proceed. I do not want any support um, an initial bond um, for the outdoor Ms. Whitmer, who is available by phone. We can um, contact her at any um, I, I really just need to make sure there wasn't a lot of room on that form, Judge. Mr. Mr. Margolis, let me just say this. For the hat for the half hour prior to entering here, I was trying to locate something that would indicate that this doesn't have the implications that it has. I was unable to find that. I understand what may have happened in the other matter because it's clear to me in the other matter, there is someone else's name on the bond that was posted for the defendant. I don't know how that occurred, what it was. I look at this case, that is not how it is from beginning to end. So my understanding is this was posted at the Sheriff's Department. It is your name. I looked at a copy of the receipt. It is your name. There is no reference to any other party. I then, from that process, is then generated something that comes to the court when that those funds come over. On that, it is your name. When we all right, Ben. So it's it's hard. So I'm just going to sort of <laughs> summarize. Apparently, this attorney posted bond in his name and signed a form. Okay, what is the problem uh, with that? Well, he. <laughs> Where did we begin? Yeah, I like how the judge sort of prefaced that with, look, I was trying to find something that would tell me this isn't what I think it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so obviously the problem is, is he now has a financial interest in this case in that if this defendant doesn't show up to court, he's on the hook. And Personally. that would... Right. Uh, you know, I don't know if he paid all the money himself, if he went, if he's the guarantor on a, on a bond, regardless. So if this guy skips bond, you know, the bail bondman comes after him. He's the one that, that guaranteed it. So he now has a, a financial interest and that would or could uh, compromise his um, impartiality. It could comp- He's supposed to look after the interests of his client and 
if uh, if his client tells him, look, I had one. This actually this is, I think, a good example. I had a guy. It was a couple years ago. We had a sentencing date, and I told him, this is not a slam dunk. You're getting probation, right? And the the sentencing date was about a week before his baby was due. It was his first child, baby mama was pregnant, that sort of thing. And he said, I don't give a damn. I am not missing the birth of my child. I'm not going to the sentencing hearing. Now, if I had right. ten thousand dollars riding on him showing up to court, um, I have a dude, if he tells me that he's not coming, I can't blab that. I have, you know, a duty of confidentiality. I have all sorts yes. of duties now that get put into play get put in potentially compromising situations where like uh bro i got 10 g's riding on this you're showing up to court you, I'm gonna, you're showing up to court right uh don't be surprised if uh, dog the bounty hunter gets an anonymous phone call from you know um not my number but uh you know yeah they phone it, down the block here saying he's not showing up to court so yeah there's a lot that is um I well, there, there, first of all, wrong with this. <laughs> I thank you again for coming on. We we discussed this. I'm like, I can look this up and figure it out, but I've never posted bond for anybody in my life or had a client do it because they don't do criminal defense. Okay, right. So yeah, I could look it up and figure it out and tell people what's going on, but it's not as interesting as hearing just like that a real life example of what yeah. we're, <laughs> what we're dealing with here. But but I have seen a judge just like this before, and he's mad because. He doesn't really dislike the defense attorney. It messes up his hearing, so he doesn't like that. And he right. doesn't want the defense attorney to get hurt, but he can't figure out a way out of it. Right. I think he's like, look, I don't, you know, I don't know what the, uh, you know, how aggressive the state bar there is in that sort of ethical conflict, um, but. <laughs> I think, you know, I don't know if there's mandatory reporting or what the judge has to do or say, but yeah. Right. But right. it puts everybody like, in an look, awkward spot. It does. Cause you, you can't, you can't have this. I mean, you said you did personal injury. It's the same thing, right? You can't lend money to the, to your client because then if you say, Hey, you need to settle, you know, why are you advising him to settle? Because you want to get your money back? Because you, yeah, it, you have an interest in it. Then, when, yeah. Right. And it, it, it changes things. So, yeah, money changes everything. I just want to say, is that thing like that podium there, like encased in glass? Sorry. Yeah, it the, looks like it. And I think, I think all this stuff is, is COVID stuff, you know. Yeah. It's got a very Nuremberg looking <laughs> kind of <laughs> thing to it. Like encased in glass. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to sidetrack you there. All right, let's see. But. Let's see what, if anything develops here. <laughs> we, I have right here the interim bond form that does precisely what the Michigan Rules of Professional Conduct don't want attorneys to do: signed by you, and then our receipt, even because it all tracks along, indicates whenever we get a bond, it tells us who it's posted by. So if the defendant had posted it herself, it would have had her name in both slots, one for the name and then one posted by. This indicates posted by you. <laughs> I get what man, I, well, I don't get because I didn't look at it, didn't have to in the other case this case, I have to look at it. I have never done that before. I'm aware of those forms. I have posted the first one as directed by the person that was intended the same time as this one, same same situation. This is Wibbler, the East Wibbler of Portland, Texas. I attempted to get the first bond transferred in her name that was possible to case. I attempted at the clerk's office at, at 358 to do what I did before in the third party's name. That was impossible. Um, I then went to not not good body language from the judge. An after hours credit card from someone who wasn't here. So I went to the bank. I signed over Ms. Whitler's money, got the cash, and posted it. And I mistakenly did not include 
her name as the Apple Lord. This is not my bond. I did not intend to do that. It was a clerical mistake on my part. I regret doing it. I apologize to the court and this line. It was never an intent to be the Apple Lord. I've never signed that form before in my life. But, but Mr. Margolis, all of that's fine and dandy, except that, you know, and you can look at it, when whenever anybody posts a bond as a charity or agent, there are certain representations that they make. So I don't I don't want to hear that. I just want to do this case. And every time something comes along, and I have to agree with the people that I don't know the implications of all of this. What I know is there's a Michigan statute that is very clear. I am not going to proceed until to the best of my ability and in, and in conjunction with my obligation to know all of the statutes are complied with. I, I'm not going to do that, especially one where there is such a glaring problem. That's the other thing that I think this illustrates really well, which is uh, we do this every day. You do this every day. But cases can go sideways fast. So this is a routine matter until the until the attorney signs the bond for the, the defendant. It could be like one of a hundred other cases that were called that day. But now this thing is absolutely upside down. Yeah, this is and even if it's true that this was a clerical error and they couldn't take a payment after hours, then you gotta look. I mean, at some point you gotta look after your your license. You gotta say, yep. look. She can stay in or he can stay in an extra 12 hours, whatever it is, until someone else's name can get on the bond. It is not that important <laughs> to jeopardize my career, my license, you know, just so that someone can get out a few hours before they otherwise would. Yeah, wait till the next day. If it's the weekend, it's just, I mean, I hate to sound cold, but yeah, it's too bad, so sad. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I feel for this guy, too, though, because, like, he obviously made a mistake. This is wrong. It shouldn't happen. I don't know. I hope, you know, I don't know if you can weasel out of it or not or what the the deal is. But I don't see any grand benefit to him. It's not like he's going to get, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like, oh, if, like, the attorney, like, stole some money or something. You think, well, I see what the rationale is. You wanted the money. I don't see what what, what the attorney gets out of this other than a client that calms down a little faster. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Is that the client there? Is she attractive? Maybe I don't know. Maybe he's got on him. I don't know. Just <laughs> yeah, us, you know, men. We're, we're very let's, simple. Let's Our bring another pile of ethical issues. Yeah. So uh, you know, that was just my question. They said they were going to go and grab the file. Which file? The the felony file, so we can seek to amend the paperwork. I have the files. The clerks are not grabbing the files for me. They, they don't get amended from us. Maybe you're not understanding that. You didn't post this with us. So my clerk can't do anything. I also called the jail, Sergeant Arnett, and said that the file was up here, so he couldn't do anything. I would just like the opportunity to rectify my mistake, the clerical error, and put it into the proper name that was my original intent. That's all. There was no ill will. There was no intent to violate any I don't care. I don't care whether there's intent. I don't care. What I care is get it right. And I'm not sure. Maybe someone in the chat or, or, or comments can tell me this because there's a lot more to this hearing, and I only have this small bit. But I think they've got witnesses and they're ready to proceed to trial. And and so the oh, judge is that... sitting there thinking, okay, I've got three or four people who showed up. And and what am I supposed to do? And that's another thing that does not make the judge happy. He doesn't want to waste right. three people's time. Y you know? Yeah. And that's in the mix as well. Oh, yeah. That would then. Yeah. I'm actually more impressed then with the judge's demeanor. I mean, he seems pretty. Um, I mean, look, I, you can tell he's upset, but he's not screaming, going nuts at this guy. Oh, yeah. If that's he's, the case. I mean, if there's witnesses. Mad. But, yeah, he's, he's, he's contained. 
Yeah, he's got a good demeanor. Um, how many, Miss Landy? How many witnesses do you have here? Four. All right, um, <laughs> folks. My apologies to you. I'm going to give it a go. Then I'm going to ask them to hold on a little bit before I do anything else because I would really like to start this case. So I'm going to stand in recess. I'm going to give you some time to get it done, Mr. Margolis, but I don't know how you correct this. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know. Thank you very much. Um, I will also consult with Mr. Reiser again because he was pretty sure that at this point there needed to be some further exploration into what's happened. I so yeah, I know I I understand yeah. that part. I just I just had to add the file right. So thank you. What's in recess? All right. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Don't make Oscar beg. It's rude. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is just a fun little bit. It's only a four-minute clip. I got it from Old Squishy Gardener. Uh, you guys know he, he's my buddy. I think he dropped two videos that I want to see just today. He's, he's got good stuff over there. But uh, uh, Ben's gracious enough to hang along here because I told him we've got somebody with no pants in court. I mean, who, could, who can pass that up? <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. McCrom. Judge Rudy Martinez. Wait, do we is know who it is? Now. Do we guess? You're like, are you gonna give a prize if you guess which one of these Brady Bunch <laughs> boxes is no pants? <laughs> You'll see. There's no mystery. Okay. Rudy All Martinez, right. you need to unmute, <clears throat> and you need to show your video. This judge is awesome too. Okay. All Sorry right. About. Why? Why are you in shorts? And that looks like underwear, not even real shorts. I was just at work, ma'am. Sorry about that. All right, Mr. Martinez, you need to be in court this afternoon. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And let me explain something to you that people don't realize. Well, I think they realize it, honestly. But I think sometimes people want to just kick a can down the road, right? <laughs> so here's the thing. If you don't take care of issues that you have, Guess what? Those issues are just going to compound. And then when you're arrested, be it at your home, at your work, at your house, maybe at your children's birthday party or your grandchildren's birthday party or at a funeral or somewhere. Right? Yes, ma'am. All of these things could happen. And you already know at the end of the day, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get arrested somewhere. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to come into the courtroom, and we're going to hear this third violation report you have. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So you need to be in the 187 District Court at 2 p.m. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. This is fun as we, as we proceed. Okay. Uh, I just like this judge. I've, I've done another video on her, and she is always like, I mean, she's also great judicial demeanor. But she is not playing. And this guy, this guy, as he realizes, he now just can't go via Zoom, but has to actually physically go to court later that day. This this is the morning. She says show up at 2, 2 p.m. He, he tries to weasel out of it. And it is delicious how she is not having it. I mean, it is so good. <laughs> that is today. The courtroom is located at 300 De La Rosa. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So here are your choices. If you... Do not come into court by 2 a.m. You know what's going to end up happening? Well, I'm, I'm going to arrested. sign off on this order that I have in my court. And it's it gives me three options. The third option is whatever, what, whatever I want to do with it. And if I don't see you, that third option, I'm going to listen to your, your attorney's argument with an open mind. But that third option may turn into a issue judge's warrant and remand without bond which means you will not be getting a bond until that's heard. Do you I think she's leaning towards that option as we sit here right yeah, now. It's, it's, it sounds like it. Yeah, now <laughs> we can actually see his face. I, I tell clients when they did this on these video things, 
don't have the light behind you. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Crazy. Now we can sort of see his face. Guy, and now he's like eating his shirt. This guy, yeah, he's oh, no yeah. pants. Yeah, this guy's a mess. The, I'm, this I'm not guy betting is, he makes is it. his attorney. Top center. Uh, yeah, and, he's... Uh, he can see that he's got to he's got to clean wall. up this mess. You'll see. Uh, he's like, oh. <laughs> I thought my job was bad. Yeah, this, this poor guy. We, we, you know, yeah, we, we we've seen you have some issues before. Understand? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, let's. How old are you? Thirty-one. You're thirty-one. Let's stop running away from our problems. Let's not turn compound a problem and make it bigger than what it should be. I'm not trying to run away from my problems, man. Well, I mean, you're, you're, well, I'm going to stop you from running away. Here it is. You need to be in the um, 187 district court today at 2 p.m. Have, if I you don't active, show up, you know what's going to happen. Well, I have active warrants already, ma'am. Or, come, or to, I get come to the 187 district what court. That's saying? what I'm telling you. You're supposed to be in the 187 district court today at 2 p.m. Whether or not you show up or not, that is completely on you. But you have been instructed. You've been instructed you need to be in court. Whether or not you're going to be in court, that's completely up to you. I've got, I have to make some plans. I've got my, my improv my class. Yeah. yeah. I've got my improv class at two. That won't work. Yeah, I got yoga after. I just, can we do this another day? On, you know man. what? If you would have just showed up to this appearance with pants on or – <laughs> or in the alternative, lifted your phone so that we didn't notice you didn't have pants on. You oh, would be done goodness. with this appearance right now. Well, isn't this and this is the same guy that just said, "I'm not trying to run away from my problems." Yeah. <laughs> if I'm gonna Come go on, to jail, really? I have to have somebody pick her up. Uh, I'm telling you right now, 2 p.m. 187 District Court. Okay. All right. See you then. This way. Mr. McCrom, do you need to speak with Mr. Martinez? I'll call him, Judge. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we don't want this. We don't want anyone else to see this. Oh, my oh, goodness. That, that ought to be a fun <laughs> conversation. That ought to be a fun okay. conversation. That's, that's what I really wish I had on video. <laughs> All right, thank you wow. very much, Ben. All that right. was so much Wait, fun. You're not going to let me read my Sovereign Citizen Manifesto? <laughs> We're done. We're all done. I really you appreciate learned me it. here under false. Uh. <laughs> that no, that was I great. I, I didn't know. I a lot to say. Oh yeah. You, no, you, you you brought good perspective nation, on this one. All right, it was great. It was fun. All right. And good yes, night, everybody. Guys, so. See you, Mike. <laughs>